If you have ever built a web app that fetches data from another server, chances are you have encountered cores at least once. But don't worry, by the end of this, you'll know exactly what's going on, why cores exist, and how to handle it like a pro. Let's start with a simple question. Why can't your browser just fetch data from any website anytime, however it wants? Well, it used to, but that was a huge security risk. Imagine you visit a banking website while another tab is open to a malicious hacker site. Now, if there were no security restrictions, that hacker site could secretly send requests to your bank's API, impersonating you and steal your data. Enter the same origin policy or SOP. It's a strict browser rule that blocks requests between different origins. Same origin policy says, a web page can only make API requests to the same origin, which is the same domain, protocol, and port from which it was loaded. Meaning, if your frontend is hosted at https bitemonk.io, it can make requests to https bitemonk.io slash API. But now if your frontend https bitemonk.io tries to fetch data from say, https api.bitemonk.com, the browser blocks it because it's a cross-origin request. This is where cores or cross-origin resource sharing comes in. It's a way for servers to say, hey, it's okay for the site to request data from me. Cores is all about HTTP header that let your server allow or deny request from different origins. When your browser makes a cross-origin request, here is what happens. The frontend, let's say HTTPS myapp.com makes a request to HTTPS api.example.com. The browser automatically adds an origin header, like this. And the server at api.example.com checks if it wants to allow requests from HTTPS myapp.com or not. If it does, the server includes a special header in the response. Access control allow origin, HTTPS colon myapp.com. And this tells the browser, yeah, the site is allowed to fetch data from me. And if the header is missing or origin is not allowed, you get the course error. So when a browser makes a cross origin request, it follows course rule to determine if the request should be allowed or blocked. Course requests are categorized into two main types based on their complexity. And by the way, these are all HTTP requests. However, we call them course requests when they involve cross origin access, meaning the request is made from a different region such as domain, protocol, or port than the one serving the web page. A course request qualifies as simple if the method is get, post, or head. And there are no custom headers like authorization tokens. And the content type header is one of these. And if the server allows access control allow origin, this request just works. If your request uses custom headers, a different HTTP method such as put, delete, patch, or a non-standard content type, the browser sends a pre-flight request first. Pre-flight request is asking for a permission before making the real request. The browser first sends an options request to check if the server allows the request. If the server responds with the right course header, the actual request is sent. So pre-flight request happens when the request uses non-standard HTTP methods such as put, delete, or patch. And the request includes custom headers such as authorization or XAPI key, etc. Or if the request has a non-standard content type such as application JSON. Here is an example of a pre-flight course request. Before sending this request, the browser first sends an options request. And the server must respond with this. Once the response is received, the browser sends the actual request. All right, we now understand what course is, why it exists, and the difference between simple and pre-flight request. But let's be real. Most of us don't even think about course until we see that error in the browser console. Let's check out exactly how to fix this course issue, whether you control the backend or not. Now, the best solution is to configure your server to allow cross-origin request. And here is an example in Node.js. This enables cores for all domains. You can also restrict access to specific origins like this. And here is an example in Java. In this Spring Boot configuration class, we define a global course policy for our backend API. The add configuration annotation marks this as a configuration class and we provide 
Web MVC Configurer Veen that customizes course settings. The Add Course Mappings method allows cross-origin requests to any endpoint under API, but only from HTTPS Bitemunk.io. We also specify which HTTP methods and headers are allowed and enable credential support. This ensures secure and controlled access while allowing necessary cross-origin requests. And if you're using Spring Security, you also need to allow cores inside your security configuration like this. And if you're using authentication, make sure course is configured before the authentication rules. Now, if you can't modify the backend, use a proxy to forward requests to the same origin. This makes a request appear as if they are coming from the same origin. And now what if you're working on a front-end project and you don't have control over the backend API? Maybe it's a third-party service or an internal API that hasn't been configured for course yet. In that case, constantly running into course errors while testing can be frustrating. You just want to make requests, see responses and move on with development. But the browser keeps blocking you. That is where you can use course browser extensions like Course Everywhere. It comes for both Firefox and Chrome. This tool temporarily overrides course restrictions, letting you test APIs without modifying server configurations. And of course, this is just for development and debugging. It's not a real fix for production. But if you just need to get things working locally without setting up proxies or backend changes, it's a quick and easy workaround. All right, so we have configured course in our Spring Boot backend, allowing cross-origin requests from bitemunk.io. Now, before we wrap up, let me address something important. Course is not the same as CSRF or cross-site request forgery. Course controls which websites are allowed to access your APIs. But CSRF is a different security issue where an attacker tricks an authenticated user into making unintended request. For example, if you're logged into a banking site and a malicious website secretly submits a transaction request on your behalf, that's CSRF. And course won't protect you from it. But don't worry, I'll cover CSRF in detail in my next video, explaining how to prevent it using CSRF tokens and same site cookies. So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss it. See you in the next one.